freelancers, ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Anthem Cast, of course, Anthem Universe's epic, amazing, stupendous Anthem podcast. I am but one of your hosts, Ogaz, but joining me on the other side of the world is a freelancer who currently cannot use his garden hose because of the extreme heat wave going on in the United Fort Tarsus, Mr. Binary Numb. Hey, <laughs> that's so true. Oh my God! England is going through the most ridiculous heat wave. Oh, <laughs> what I'm thinking is going like, on? <laughs> oh, I oh, watched the Indiana Jones movie, Raiders of the Lost Ark. You know, when you open the ark and then it's like just melting, right? Because you're nice. exposed to radiation. That 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 feels like what England is right now. It is so hot. That, that was like a face of wax, wasn't it? Like the four CG. It was. It was. was like, it was a. It was a wax melting. face that they put a blowtorch to i think but the funny thing is it was probably more horrific than the real thing <laughs> it was more horrific probably yeah it used to give um, me nightmares that, that so image I, I do have a fan on in the background so if you do hear it i apologize yeah. but yeah. i need to keep air flowing around my betty swallows so. <laughs> all good and it's been a hell of a week of course no doubt for anthem we're going to keep this one short and sweet today but we do want to talk a little bit about the awesomeness that has been the trailer the game trailer of course um that was revealed in the last few days which was the trailer that we saw at e3 so realistically it, it isn't anything new but it is for those that didn't actually play the demo at e3 because of course it was an opportunity for all of us to get some insight into what the lucky devils got to play um, at E3, and I think it's fair to say it was um, a pretty pretty good trailer, Mr. Binary. Uh, well, we got to see 20 minutes of gameplay, right, which is more than what we got to see at E3, it's more than we got to see Uncut anywhere too. else, and it was, uh, yeah, apart from clearly the grindy bit, but yeah, yeah, it was definitely, <laughs> a majority of it was uncut. Um, yes, it's the, same, it's the same mission that we've seen, um, it's just from a different perspective, right um and it was lovely to see i think i was i was still just blown away by the level of details the you know the particle capacity the edge frostbite engine is just mm. stunning mm. like that has to be ea's most unutilized engine in the world like bioware have just seen this baby and just gone we're gonna chuck everything at it because all it's done so far is play fifa which is like big screen oh you got battlefield 5 but well, battlefield yeah <laughs> but still it's you know still battlefield 5 is relatively simple because you know that game's aiming for frame rate right rather than it is beauty mm. but mm -hmm. anthem just looks stunning like oh in 4k down it does it does look something special and um it's interesting one of the one of the uh, freelancers on twitter asked mark uh, mark Dara, of course uh, what what is actually the game been running on and uh, in fact he did reply in the e3 demo it was running on in fact two 1080 ti in sli now if you know what that means that's um that's a lot of video card right there it's 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 double the whammy of awesomeness and um um, fortunately, I, I hope it will scale well. I suspect it will, of course, because we know it's hitting the console platforms as well. And uh, <laughs> I just thought, holy crap, that's a that's a hell of a spec to just go. Yeah, it's just a couple of ten TIs. TIs in SLI, <laughs> or if you if you're AMD, <laughs> you might know it's Crossfire, right? But damn, uh, mm. yeah, that'd be interesting. I'll be interested to understand why they did SLI. Like, if is because SLI doesn't really give you that much performance increase. Right, it, it gives no, you. No, in fact, it, it, often it's quite the opposite. It, to, in, it's in a lot of games, it is, um, because they're not, it's not they're not built to deal with with SLI based hardware. Mm. So, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I think that that for me was slightly worrying that they did the trailer in what ninety nine point nine percent of gamers can't afford. So, mm. um, I think I would have preferred to carry on seeing maybe an Xbox One X version of the gameplay. So. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if yeah it'll be, it, I hope that the game still looks as good with a standard if you've got a 1070 or above like you should be able to experience something good oh yeah right? yeah yeah um, I don't think that's going to be a question so, yeah um, uh, yeah you're right and there's been a few questions of course on Twitter no doubt Mark Dara has been answering <laughs> once again and I've got to admit some of the questions at this point are getting um, <laughs> you know a little out of hand uh so 
I think the latest one I read the, earlier today was something like, Mark, if the thrusters are inverted at a 45-degree angle and you go through the waterfall and you land on the ground, but you don't quite crash, but you land at an angle, do you take damage? And you're like, what? Dude. <laughs> Dude. What are you asking? So there's, I suppose the thing is that we, we're sort of picking on the silly questions, but the response to that is that, that to be fair, Mark does answer some of those silly questions. <laughs> he does. <laughs> he, he, is feeding, he is feeding that conversation a little bit to a certain extent. Mark Dara, <laughs> I need to know, is there an IHOP in Fort Tarsus? Because <laughs> I need my bacon and pancakes. Yeah, there's a few things out there in the last few days, little things like there's no split screen, um, which I, I think, you know, I don't think we're surprised about personally. The, the design of this engine and little shooter games typically don't cater well for this type of thing, but are you surprised by that? Uh, absolutely not. No. Mm. no. I have a 4K screen and I'm not sharing it with yeah. anybody. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what else was there? Oh, here's an interesting one. At this point, interested me. He said, uh, "People said, how many servers are there going to be? Like, literally, there's going to have to be a lot of servers for uh, if if a game is going to be dedicated four players per server, um, of course." But then he referenced um, using virtual machines, which I think makes a lot of sense in that you you actually aren't using uh, multiple physical server machines allocated to four players, but there is probably one server that is actually you know managing multiple virtual uh, machines yeah, allocated that, per that, player. Let's, let's not brush that over. Like that 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 is standardization. Like virtualization of hardware has been around for the last ten years. Yeah. Yeah. So so anyone that says anyone that believes that dedicated hardware means that they are playing on a physical server of their own, <laughs> you're a moron. <laughs> right? So oh, wow. uh no. That, that, yeah, virtual infrastructure. So they'll be sitting on, you know, some Intel Zion servers with a mm. bunch of RAM, not terabytes and terabytes of RAM. And mm. but those instances will be in the hundreds or potentially, you know, they'll be in the hundreds on the server. Or they could be sitting in AWS. It depends. Um, it depends how, how they're deploying their, their environment. But uh, it does. It does, and look, there are, there are a whole bunch of interesting questions that I'm actually we'll we'll do an article up on this because there's some really good stuff that came out of the comments with Mark Dara. Um, the last two that I think just raised interest to me was this is interesting. This is by um, at sh13win, and he said, "Can you pick up a down teammate, as in physically pick him up and take him, you know, thrust out of danger?" Okay. I'm like, carry him. That's, cool, That's actually a cool that idea. Cool. I like that, right? So Mark actually said, no, you can't. But I'm like, if that's an idea for the devs right now, that's 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 awesome. a really good one, yeah. <laughs> like, it's imagine like... Stuff like, like yeah. Actually, stuff like that, like Battlefield Five or anything like that, right? Where you actually, actually, no, you can't just go and chuck a, a syringe in someone's ass and all of a sudden they're like revitalized <laughs> to full health. You need to drag yeah. them into cover and then do some, and then go to work, right? That's right. I like that. That's really cool. Yeah, I quite like that one. So that was a nice one. And the other one that raised my attention was because of a reference to Mega Man. <laughs> God bless. Uh, Crit Chance TV said, can you have Mega Man-like weapons, like, you know, guns, hands that will actually become guns? And the answer was, nope. <laughs> oh, oh, well. We can dream. Down. We can dream. Uh, but look, I think, as I said, we'll, 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 we'll make an article for that, I think. So check out anthemuniverse.com. If you haven't been, we've been trying to collate a lot of those things and news and pieces together for you. Uh, and of course, no doubt, the most important part of today and the last few days has been that glorious trailer. Um, we saw it twice, in fact. We saw it once with the uh, uh, the guys actually just talking over uh, the gameplay in terms of the uh, the... Uh, by way of playing the, the demo themselves. And the second time, in the last day, uh, we're able to see, of course, John Warner and Mike Darrow themselves in their floating spaceship. <laughs> the, yeah, the floating light dock. It, uh, it, it, yeah, it caused a few fun memes, I think. It was, uh, it was a good fun, just the way that they were sitting because of the green screen. It actually put them in a very uh, odd position on the screen. <laughs> It, it looked like they were manning their own spacecraft, but uh, it actually made it more epic because it's like they're just floating in the game. Um, and because they weren't physically playing, they couldn't really do anything with their hands. So they, no, they just hands kept, them, kept them on their legs. Yeah, yeah. It was like, yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> and, and even when they were, they were talking, all the questions were coming through to Mark and, and poor John. What did John say? He said, What am I, chop liver? <laughs> <laughs> he did. Excuse me, I am the game director. 
<laughs> and, and then he, of course, he, I think Mark made reference to, you know, make sure you make reference to his Twitter. And I think Mark just gave his Twitter instead of John's. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, it was good. It was not a healthy band. Like it felt John. like, you know, poor Uncle John. <laughs> so John, John, and Mark, and uh, and of course, I'm um, AJ, the community manager. We're we're looking after that feed and making sure that the world were able to see and experience Anthem and uh, the value proposition, of course, that they came out with, which is the latest statement for it, is it's the social co-op action RPG. So there you have it. If someone asks you what is Anthem. Your answer is, well, good sir. It's a social co-op action RPG. Uh, okay. Yeah, it works. I like it. It's clean and simple. Yep. But um, so that's that. Uh, what is that? The gameplay trailer. Let's take a look. I mean, did you want to talk to anything before we jump on the trailer? Because I think we could probably play it through and maybe break down the things that we uh, we pulled away from it. Uh, well, actually, no. I could I could say a lot of things, uh, but honestly, it, no. It was actually just nice to see a full gameplay through. Um, mm. And it, you know, it's it's clearly the same video footage that we saw at E3. It's clearly for the last two E3s, right? Uh, and sort of stuff in between. It's obviously the same run through, but mm -hmm. you're just seeing it from a different perspective. Um, but Ben Ivine did an absolute. He actually did a really good job uh, narrating over the top. I am mm -hmm. right thinking he's an Australian guy, right? That's why. Yeah, Just, yeah. Because all I think is Squirt yeah. Dude from like Finding Nemo whenever I hear his voice. <laughs> uh, ben and Vine did a good job. It was. He it did. Good. It was smooth. He did a great job. And, and the, his, his players that were playing on screen were, were, did a quite a job. good job too. Uh, yeah. Suspect. Well, you, yeah, we respect. It, it looked great. Uh, really good. There's a. The, the gameplay definitely threw back at it. Well, I say through back. It made me have a lot of questions. Probably more questions mm -hmm. than what I got answers. Um, mm. The only thing that I left from coming out of that 19-minute gameplay trailer was... Mm. Uh, I'm so desperate to get my hand on it. And... <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm going to be buying it on PC this time, so that that's an absolute for definite. I'm going to be buying on PC, but I obviously will get it on Xbox as mm. well. I'll get it on both. Um, but yeah, I, I just I cannot wait. But it makes you wonder. I mean, surely by now, Bioware must be sick of this demo. They must have played it so much. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, you can you can tell the execution of the demo is pretty on point. Like they know exactly the tells, exactly the calls, yeah. exactly where they're going to go. Oh, well, that's right. It was just where, you know, some of Ben Irvine's narration was, you know, that he's like, oh, hopefully the storm will do a, like a lightning splash. But before he's finished saying it, the mm. storm does it, right? So it's like <laughs> slightly out of kilt. Do you know what I mean? But uh, I think what blew my mind slightly was we got to see some of the map. We got to see some of the map. Sure did. And then we actually found out actually that map that we saw was only one of nine other regions. Yeah, there's been a look. Uh, there's been a little bit of controversy about that in the last 24 hours. I think um, actually Brendan Holmes jumped onto Reddit um, earlier today, and he made comment to that particular comment. And I think what was going on was that in the in that gameplay trailer they talked about this being one tenth, but they're making reference to the actual in-game action. If that makes sense. So the the mission area that they're operating in right now, um, and that map that was released uh, from from what I've been told is pretty much. By and large, the the basis of the of most of the map, it's probably about eight or oh. nine tenths of the actual map. Oh, so okay. when you see that map, so like, what you're saying is the mission that we saw is actually only about one ninth or one tenth of the whole map. Potentially, yeah, potentially. That um, sound quite right. Well, if you look at the map itself, there's like twelve regions lapped out, and yeah. I guess the point being is that those regions, whatever size they they may or may not be. Yeah. Um, those regions are, to be fair, a good nine tenths of the of, of the game world. Far and okay. look, I think th th there was a big sort of not a big outlash, but a few questions on on Reddit about that. This idea that well, hang on, that's that's quite small um, for some people. That is quite and, small, yeah. I'm, I'm and the it's answer the answer was in the verticality of things. Um, so that bearing in mind that. You know, there's, the the difference with the game world in, that we're operating in right now is that we can go into water, we can go into sky, we can go into caves. 
Um, and I know that's not a replacement necessarily, but that's the conversation at the moment. So people are curious about that. I suspect they'll be, you know, probably talking more about that in the near future, or at least trying to explain what that is a little bit more. So there's less sort of curiosity yeah. in question. Um, but but Brennan Holmes's comment to this whole conversation was basically that was that now well, the map that you're seeing is a fair amount of the map in game but bearing in mind we haven't actually zoomed into that map in great detail we've only been to one small place of that whole map right so it's still not really a good gauge i think okay no that makes sense mm -hmm. but uh but anyway so that was a good point um and they talked a little bit about music and a few things i think someone asked about who's the composer and um i don't know like a, they didn't they said they're either not confirming it or they they're not advising it at yet as yet but i get this very you know, do, 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 do. it's very um very jeremy saul jeremy saul is the uh, uh, uh elder scrolls um so that theme's very uh, but but when they start the um stronghold mission there's this very synth uh synth deep um bass like a dig -a -dig -a -dig -a -dig -a -dig, very mass yeah, effect right, yeah. almost so there's definitely a mix-up of, of styles here. So I don't know who it is, um, but I suspect, obviously, it's someone that's been working on video game music for some time, I suspect. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, yeah, I'm looking forward to find out who it, who it is. But um, Yeah, yeah. What else do we know? Oh, good. the beginning. In the beginning, we'll find this out as we go in the trailer. But right at the beginning there, we see, of course, they talk about gear, weapons, and abilities. But there is one particular column to look out for in that trailer, and that, of course, is consumables. There's actually a section for consumables on the right-hand side of the lockout menu when we get to it. Um, so I'd be interested to think about what that is all about. Okay. Um, shall we play? Let's play, brother. I've got a beer in hand. I'm ready to go. On the trailer. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Anthem. Hey, ben. ben Irving, one How of are the you? Producers for the game, <laughs> and on behalf of everyone Aussie, here, Aussie, Aussie. Way, we are excited to share this live gameplay. Right, so experience we've seen this demo before, no doubt. We've Joining seen the Strider many times. Amazing developers, controllers in hand. And we found out on Twitch, on an sorry, on Twitter today, the that you cannot customize your Strider. Sorry. No, you cannot customize your Strider. I wasn't expecting to, but anyway. Another one? Contract's getting fun now. You have the strangest sense of fun. So they come in. So this is the point. Mm. I don't know if you pause it here, right? Mm. But this is. So this is. So we get clear distinguishment of a female voice. Yes. Right. But they've also said that you're, you're the protagonist or yourself. All right. We've got controversy around what the actual protagonist in the game is. But you, as a character, you can choose whether mm -hmm. you're male or female, though, can't you? Yes, you can. So, <clears throat> Bioware are clearly gone with a female. On this point. Yeah. Yeah, which is fine. As I think we said, was it Fem Shep was awesome anyway. She was the best. She was a better, yeah. <laughs> she was way better than, than Mal Shep. But um, but yeah, you're right. They, they're continuing on with that initial trailer from a year ago, where the ranger was that. Well, well, in the, the ranger suit was female. But you're saying now the protagonist, regardless of that javelin, um, is the same. Yeah, but as well, the um, assumption so, is the same. Which would I guess would suggest what like like Mass Effect will have a male voice and a female voice. Yeah, well, I'm assuming so. Yeah. Yeah, because they, what else did they say? Mark Darrow said the other day, what was it? No, um, of course, there's there's only one species, so to speak. It's human, and you are not of Earth. So you're not an Earthling, but you are a human. Uh, yeah, well, the, what they said was you, you, also your javelins will not be, not sexualized, right? But they will not have, whether you're male or female, yeah. they will have the same That's outlines. Right. That's right. Yeah, 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 which is fine. I mean, like, these are small details that people sometimes get caught up on, don't they? <laughs> Just, yeah, yeah. Some people um, love a camel toe and boob mounds. <laughs> Some people don't. I don't know when, when you when you're shooting and looting. I just I'm looking at the enemy. <laughs> exactly. I'm not looking at my backside, but well, maybe I should. <laughs> Let's move on. Face said these bastards made some kind of acid. The use. This is Halleck, right? Well, that uh, supply caravans. Scar's taking down whole caravans. It looks like a Damn. Mexican. I know. <clears throat> Should make this a challenge, huh? I like it. <laughs> I love that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that voice that's pitched beautifully. I know. Challenge. Uh, who, who gets uh, cyber duty? The chair's all yours. Now, who is he, so, Owen? I know his voice, and I can't picture it from, from where I know his so, voice so from. So, Owen, Owen plays as your, well, as your voiceover AI in, during the game. Um... But um, well, he's clearly not. He's AI. interesting because he's human. Some sorry, 
No, but I mean, his actual voice is, a, is in our world. I know that voice mm. from somewhere, and I can't think why. I don't know why, but there's a few moments where his humour sounds very Stewie Griffin. I'll just say that. <laughs> just that, that poshness about it. But, uh, shut it all down. Now, Colossus. Oh, yes. He's a gay, right? And good point there. The it's facial animations appear to it. have <laughs> uh, some good facial animations, though. I think uh, in, it's uh, fine. It's this good. is no M A E, is it? Or yeah, Bioware have they got Frostbite well under control here. Yeah, yeah. Our expedition starts in the player's Strider. This is your forward base of operations. Here you can equip your javelin with a wide array of gear, weapons, and abilities as well as customize your appearance to show off your own personal style and flair. Yep. In front of us, we have the Colossus. Jen will be our squad leader today, so Jen, let's jump in and get started. See, it's such a weird way that you get into that thing. Like, mm. If, you, if, you, if you're watching the, the video, I'm sorry, this is a terrible decide. podcast, but... But we can put the order in for the, yeah, yeah. For the video, all right? You're like looking at your Colossus, and the, the actual area that you have to get into is like mm. tiny as fuck. And you even mm. see the arms move in weirdly. Right, like yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're scary. Maybe, maybe, so maybe can... the unique ability that freelancers have is they're double jointed. <laughs> well, it's confirmed that the feet, so where the feet stand inside the javelin, they basically end at the knee joints of the javelin. So, if you're curious about that peculiar bipedal sort of insectoid stance that they all have, uh, it has been confirmed that that that's that your foot is actually at the knee joint of the javelin. Uh -huh. Okay. Mm. Who you want to play with? Now this Generally, is cool. Of course, the first time we've seen in-game menus. This is pretty cool. Yep. So um, this is a, a we clip see... to go, right? This is all part of the UI. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes, it is. Yes. Called out to Ecliptica, um, in your hard work and your colleagues, no doubt, of course, on all of this in the UI. Inviting two of her friends, but when you play the game, you will choose from your friends, guildmates, other like-minded individuals, or even go out and explore the world on. So here's what we're talking about before with the map. So there's a, this in this shot, they'll scan right. across the map, and you'll see about four, eight or nine zones there. Um, oh, actually, the going back to the, just pausing. For, sorry. So, so that was interesting. So you're in your Strider, right? Mm, mm. And I suppose the context of how you got into your Strider as your FOB from Fort Tarsus. But then, so you so when you're in your Strider, you're not already grouped up, right? So what you you choose to go on an expedition or you um because that's what happened right you ch you went on an expedition you got into your mm -hmm. you chose an expedition and you chose and you got into your, your javelin and then it gives you the menu system which then you choose to either team up play with mm -hmm. your guild members or go solo and mm -hmm. then you choose what mission you want to do yes that's that's the way i'm seeing it right that's the that's that's, mm -hmm. that's the playthrough and there's been references, I mean, John in particular actually said that there's multiple striders throughout the world. Um, so I think the concept is that your fast travel mechanic is strider to strider. So, so, so if I'm thinking, so the closest thing I can think of then is mm -hmm. low. So if you take Monster Hunter World, where you unlock camps in the different maps, mm -hmm. that's a good comparison. Or if you are playing Horizon Zero Dawn and you're unlocking the long necks. Yeah, right. yeah, fair. But, that's um, the way yeah, I've sort of seen that. Yeah, yeah, that, that, I think that's how it's going to be. But that that does raise some weird questions because I mean the whole point was that these striders are not off assembly line. You know, javelins are not off an assembly line. But I mean, there's just what there's like hundreds of striders out there. Like, but they're just all being made by there individual people. There must be like, only a, there must be one per. Were region they using the same schematic? schematic? Yeah, because well, if we're you know we're watching when we're looking at this this screenplay, right? So actually, mm. this is, clearly isn't one region, right? Because you've got Academy Sorry. Ruins, you've got Great Fall Canyons, you've got mm -hmm. Fort Fortress of Dawn, High Road. So you work with this mini map that we're actually seeing in the gameplay is the whole map, right? Mm. Yeah, with exception to maybe the top there, you've got High Road, Fortress of Dawn, and something <coughs> else cut up the top. That's that's from my understanding. That's going to be the bulk of the map that we've seen, yeah, and the bulk of the map for the game. So yeah, clearly but, verticality does play a huge part into the size of that map. 
Yeah, I think it will. Um, well, and we also don't see a proper zoom scale here, do we? I mean, if we had a zoom scale, no. that might help a little bit here. But uh, let's let's move As on you from can that see, there are a lot beautiful of map. Activities to choose from. For today, we'll be playing the missions, scars, and now, you notice that the phrasing there was start expedition, launching expedition. So they're using yeah. this for you to depart your strider. We're going on expeditions. And the difference is they also have a difficulty setting. Yes. Um, okay, so I'll be interested to see how that plays out. Co-op action RPG from Bioware. Where you yeah. will join a group called the Freelancers. Yeah. The Freelancers are the brave few who go out into the wild and face danger head on. They can do this yeah, because be they are equipped see how with powerful javelin exosuits. Now this is where the fascinating commentary comes here, um, thanks to Ben Irving, and he mentions that the javelins are handed down from generation to generation, generation handmade. Yeah. So I like that idea. This, so you know, it's a, it's it's a, you're passing it on family so it's an heirloom <laughs> there we go and of course coming up here is the beautiful uh, emotes that we're going to see her colossus <laughs> yeah, the a wave. heavily armored battle exo no the yeah, agility for wave. massive firepower as you can see her two friends have joined us renata is playing Renard. in the ranger a faster moving javelin with a focus on there precision. we go Silver is also playing a Colossus, <laughs> but with a completely it's a very simple player. wave to his. It's like, One that oh focuses guys. on close quarter combat, and Hi. we'll see his flamethrower a bit later on. It actually looks like a totally different ropes. appearance yep. with that sweet, sweet, <laughs> that red, sweet, red, sweet red, red strap. Red strap. Right. Uh, I swear ben, ben stole that from Ours you, dude. I swear. <laughs> a world abandoned by its gods, the Shapers. I see that, Rude loves the Jamaican Lago, one of the two. Here you can see our That's true. And I have heard internally, I think they like to call Colossus Big Red. Um, I've seen Big a few of the, no, the big boy. Come on, Big Red. We've been calling him Big Boy, but I think uh, I think they win. <laughs> they can call it whatever. Owen is our cipher yeah. guide for the mission, and will provide valuable intel. So the first encounter with the scars. It's funny, right? Because you watch you watch this game, mm. and you see those damage numbers. Now for me, actually, the damage mm. numbers isn't a huge thing. Like when mm. it's the when it's the, the white numbers, not the big yellow ones. Mm -hmm. um, I think the scars fine. are relentless invaders who so crave the ancient big yellow power of the shape of technology. Come out and they're in a constant much. conflict with the freelancers. Yeah, when they take on, they try and fire off some rounds at the, oh, love that, that melee stomp. Beautiful. Uh, when they later on take on the, um, uh, the Ash Titan, the numbers popping out of that are pretty big. <laughs> yeah. But they're like six thousand something. Like Up ahead, we have a scar watch Now here's an interesting point. So right now, Ben talks here, about so taking out watchtowers, and if you do not yeah. do that, call for um, support. Oh, so that does that up. imply we've got kind of like a Far Cry esque watchtower system here? Not maybe not to that extent, but maybe so. Weapons. Oh, and the, and the turrets. Better move quickly. That could be really exciting, or it could be annoying. But uh, I like the idea of it. It means you have to manage those towers. Because you, you want to clear out any future enemies. Here, but not much. Yeah, the only bit of the gameplay that right. seems to Checking worry me slightly is mm -hmm. ascending and descending. You have no speed mm -hmm. difference. But it doesn't feel any different. Missions can be joined in you have the mm -hmm. same travel speed. Reinforcements. Our fourth squad member, which seems Catherine, a little bit weird, is about to join us. What, why is that a concern? Catherine joined us in the storm. Well, a glass cannon with powerful terminal. Well, when you're flying, right? Armor. Terminal Catherine bottle velocity, right? You're, you're, launch, and while if you're flying upwards and you've got thrusters, it's going to feel a little bit slower. But, okay, because but in then when you're descending, and you're still going to be thrusters, you're going to be going a lot wars. faster or pushing further than terminal velocity, right? Whereas if you actually watch the gameplay, whether he goes up, down, left, or right, he has the same movement speed. That's it. That's it's the. Not real. It's not real. It's not real enough for binary. It's not real. It's not. Right. That's not. not a, that's it's not. A, not, a, not, a, not a criticism. Wait, it's like criticism, but it's not a. Uh, it's not a deal breaker. So now here's the Ash Titan, of course. That we know is crazy overpowered, and of course the guys have been advised to avoid it. <laughs> and that will do. Um, now we missed the thing a moment ago. I just want to pause okay. for a sec. There was a, a call in where the storm joined the fourth player. Um, was able to join mid-mission without break, and for and those that have one. had those, and at level one too. For those that have had those struggles in the past, um, you know, in, in various games, I, I can recall countless times, even in like the division. Sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll jump in, and my mates are already halfway through something, and you just, you just want to join, but you can't. 
Uh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. looks like in Anthem, yeah. you can. Yes! <laughs> no, it does. Okay, so that's and that, that's the most interesting thing, right? He's like, squad. At least she, we're all level 30 or whatever. Caroline's mm -hmm. joined. She's level 1. And she can just jump straight in and get experience and loot and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, which exactly. Is, which is brilliant. And they've nailed that, I think. I think you're right. We, we talked about this accessibility last time, that I think with the Bioware brethren, um, the previous Bioware fans, plus all the Looter Shooter fans and MMO people, yeah. there's, there's, there's got to be some breadth of accessibility. You might alienate a few of the hardcore, but I think if they do it right, this is a good way of getting everyone in, and you can invite your friend in who just bought the game. I love that idea. Uh, yeah. Um, nice. The, f the, the key, right, and the same across Destiny, Division... And that's where I'm putting, you know, today, the direct examples from, just is like the that Titan, you, you can't just have your mate come and join you because the game doesn't, really important point doesn't allow what it, it to. Means is every mm. time you mm. go out and explore the world, but do you think, does you that raise some questions? I mean, they said, look, you know, it's designed for four players, players, but one player is going to be fine. By now you've probably but, noticed I mean, that's, that's a very, really I suppose they don't have to worry about PvP. They were very specific, though. They said the game is ideally played for four people. Like right now, mm, our squad mm, just mm. discovered the secret you can underwater play so entrance three, to the but Scar the, Stronghold. The game scales best at four. So what that really looks like um, is going to be interesting. And we'll have to I test that out. Before, what's it, what's, what's that's right. What's the mission going to be like playing as a single person compared to a, by a, a team four? Challenges. Once you discover a if you heard some of the uh, the music cue the there, that was that sort of Mass Effect electronica that I was referencing earlier. It's not exactly Mass Effect, but it's certainly more Mass Effect than the horns that we hear at the beginning like of that great fanfare. Um, so obviously changing up a little bit to keep the pace. Mr. Colossus here. <sighs> that right shield, man. Love it. Combos are a really important part of group play. Combos. Using certain abilities together allows you to combo right, so for this extra bit effects confused like bonus me. damage. Mm -hmm. Okay, go on. I feel oh, a little bad for making fun of Catherine earlier, so let's see if we can have her set up a Yeah, don't make fun of Catherine. Yeah, yeah, yeah but he fair. made fun of Catherine because she's only level one. Yeah. All right? At level one, nice she clearly combo. has, like, this huge storm strike that takes out four fifths of these guys health and then a level 30 colossus and course, goes and takes out with the rest of the water the rest of the water. so right there catherine called this down a true. lightning storm so that was the only used bit her well. rail gun uh, to combo for massive okay. bonus damage maybe, maybe they've tweaked it they might have tweaked it for the gameplay demo i mean they did say of course that you yeah. wouldn't be able to access storm at level one if you think about it it's actually well, impossible right. because she won't be unlocked. He or she, I should say, the, the yeah, javelin yeah. will not be unlocked until about you know level five or thereabouts. Uh, well, it depends which way you do the story. Mm. Because you can choose which ways you want it or what areas you want to do first, right? True. Um, and of course, we just saw um, an elite that we just took out there, which was rather nice with that massive, massive shield they're holding. There's a shape relic. Wait, well, here's this verticality off. stuff coming in. So the, again, that point you? before that they've got to, um, you know, I guess have this underwater up level. There's a, a greater scale of this in this game than we've seen previously. But yeah. I think people, I think they're going to have a challenge on their hands because I think people are going to not consider that in their brain as their pro process. I, there's this inherent thing that people do on YouTube. You probably remember with Division and Destiny and GTA. I remember, um, I think was it... Um, no, Ghost Recon. When Ghost Recon was announced for, for Wildlands, a lot of people did like map comparisons and they go, oh, well, this is like one third of GTA. Um, there is a sense that people like to do that just to compare. Yeah. Which is probably not fair. Um, it sucks, but it's probably not fair, but it will happen. Um, so I guess they'll need to sort of work out how they manage that message. Night has no, fallen true, in the world of Anthem, and the creatures mm. that inhabit the darkness are out on the I love this. With the but relics, honestly, they've got this. If you look at them, day, they're kind of... Right now, have you ever seen like that? Pause it right here. Yeah. You can actually yeah. also see the verticality that is in this level. That's right. Right? You can see it. You can shoot all the way up. You can shoot down. And you know that, obviously, later on in the gameplay, that there is an entire dungeon level that is below you. Mm -hmm. Right? Right? Um, I don't know what they've done to that relic, but it's getting worse by the minute. I'd love it. And I was just going to say before See that the, the, um, from the, of the relics, how they've got, got that, that disc 
with the light, this that literal light coming out of it. It reminds me a lot of like a, a, like a vibrating speaker, you know, like yeah. a subwoofer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and, off, and, then all the way to the and that's exactly what you look at it. If, that's right, and it makes sense because they, it's about silencing the relic, the expert, yeah. and you have to pick up echoes in and put, place them into the location yeah, yeah. down here to do that. So everything like has Janet this very for, for the music nerds out there. There's a tonality. There's a there's a there's a music. I don't know what we call it sensuality about this game, which is I actually kind of cute because I love my music, but um, I love how everything has this musical theme about it. In the top right hand corner of the screen, you can see our objective is to find all six echoes and take them to the shape interface. So up ahead, Scylla has one on his back in the Colossus, it's and cool here mechanic. you can see Jen Grab has the two. Thing. So put Scylla the just thing put one. In the thing. <laughs> It's classic, but it yeah, works. Yeah. Grab the thing, put the thing in the thing. And defend when we get the these, and that'll be three out of six. Defend and the thing. Halfway done. Do the thing. <laughs> the only problem now is we have to go through those troops in the middle to find the rest. Uh, okay, now here we have another elite. Awesome. Now Jen used her railgun to knock that elite out of the sky. Yeah. And he's still got the spikes of the other scars on him on that elite, which is yeah. cool. And here's that anthemic music we're talking about. Oh, no, no, no. Lots of brass and horn. I love it. Lots of brass. Looks like it might be, yep, frost grenade out. Jen's gonna use frost grenade her for a big combo. Alright, good job, beautiful. Jen. And the legendary. Oh, what was that? The guy again? Is it legendary? Well, all I know is I haven't seen the jar as rough yet. No. Now, these guys are holding legendary weapons. Yep. And we do know we that the, the middle, tears the left of these two um, turrets. We could take them head on and all the tears recently. Like but Jen's gonna all I know is there's the first one. legendary and then there's master crafted. Okay, didn't quite That's get. Right. They're gonna have to flank behind and hit those weak points. So there was talk about there being like an ancient tier, but I guess is that master crafted? Maybe that's it for now. Um, it just looks so good. I know it's terrible problem. It just looks so good. Like you can hear the sound. Okay, and actually, actually, for a podcast, in this area, the last thing believe it or not, to do all you're going to hear right now is the sounds of the game. The you're not, you know, you're listening mm -hmm. on an audio, and all you're going to be listening is the sounds of the game in our description. But it that could be an interesting, I guess, test of, what of that how good like. the sound is because I've, I've, I've watched science. this video a couple of times, and I've been mm. blown away by Wait, how the sound dynamic and the sound ranges and the different noises have been made. What the hell was that? I think so just going back to that point, that I found that list that we had, and it was so that the, the weapon types, the weapon levels were common, uncommon, rare, epic, legendary, awesome and master crafted. Quite, quite a few tiers. And like, man, that's Relics a lot of tiers. And, and like, four is epic? And I'm like, how do you get more than epic? And then you go, well, oh, right five is legendary. Like, come on, come on, man. How do you get more than legendary? <laughs> so number seven is going to be like, super, super color, prejudicial, awesome, or something. Scars were using those eggs as something, making acid probably. So the job's not done until we get rid of all the eggs. So the they talk a lot about the movement, of course, being made. that the Colossus has a slower um, uh, in action speed. The slower ground speed. In terms of, right. Thank you. Flight speed, speed is the flight speed is the changing. Is I have a bad feeling right. there are more than just scars in this stronghold. All right, so this was very new to us. We had some early this uh, journey in the E3. The entrance. And I love the little mission object up the top there is to find the source of the eggs. It's not really fun the structure. I mean, when you see that, you kind of think, oh crap. <laughs> it's not going to be good at the end of this thing. Um, but what's interesting is so what we haven't talked about, right, is we also have so we a damage indicator, right? So if you pause it, are a long form so we can actually, mm -hmm. so in the we actually see like a damage indicator, so where damage is coming from, right? Which mm -hmm. actually looks like a sound wave. I play, yes. No play on Anthem, right? But if you watch the old Winamp audio visuals, right, you used to get like, do you remember? <laughs> some people, some old people just dated themselves right there. <laughs> some people mm -hmm. may not, right? But if you Winamp. remember Winamp, right, you used to be able to change the equalizer oh, view. Oh. Yeah, the views of the equalizer you used to get. And that's what mm -hmm. the damage counter looks like. So you can actually see what direction gam damage is coming from. And then for mm -hmm. maybe some people don't realize where they're looking at is you're actually seeing ammo and health drop. 
<laughs> which is quite a lot. Yep. You see a lot of damage. Uh, you see a lot of ammo and a lot of health drop. Mm-hmm. Um, of time, we're going to skip ahead in the action. So remembering that Mark uh, and uh, Jonathan mentioned that this mission in particular, this stronghold, um, if you will, of four players to find some epic loot would typically go between 35 to 40 minutes. Yeah. Hence that skip that we just saw where we skipped forward. And I'm going to pause it there. We just missed something that was awesome. Did you see that ranger shot? No. There was a ranger shot there. I'm just going to go back just a little bit. I hope they don't break stuff here. Yeah. Um, but, and it's as they come round into this room, Strongholds there are is a pulse so in the or of energy time, rifle shot the the from the ranger. And it has a ricochet effect, and it looks really cool. Um, where it is, it's coming up in a moment. But anyway, you'll see it basically bounce between two of the uh, these lovely spider enemies. Very alien. Oh yes, there it is. That was boom, so boom, boom. easily missed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Absolutely. All right, Jen, let's show off some different weapons that was cool. up ahead. Let's have um, Silent in front with his flamethrower cool. and have And of course, coming up, we're gonna launcher. see another combo, aren't we? Oh no, we're not. No, you get the combo in a minute with the weather on it, weather and like a light. Man, the flame effects from that flamethrower are just sick. <laughs> I love it. I'm slightly disappointed in the fact that we're now seeing this in 1080Ti SLI. <laughs> like, I'm sure I want to, I want to know what it actually looks like in a normal consumer's Ooh. PC. So, Mr. Ranger just threw our little. That was an interesting emote. mechanic. As you play so the ranger that was an emote. throughout, a was, that, was that what that was, an emote, really that flare gun? Yeah, it was, yeah. Not right. just That's the second emote, more yeah. Powerful, but also because it so allows we've you seen two emotes now, though, the wave and the flare, and um, I think it'd be kind of cool. Imagine if you've all got your own, if you just customize your flare color, yeah, yeah. Uh, that'd be kind of sweet. What is yeah, that? Sounds like my wife You're supposed the to tell me. Right. <laughs> just be careful. She's not listening, of course. Oh, no, she's out of the pool. <laughs> no, she'll catch up later on the YouTube. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, is what, this is what our wives do after hours. They, they watch us talk to video games. <laughs> All right. So this is the first piece of, piece of lore that we're coming Our freelancers just discovered an ancient Arcanist resonance. Interesting Arcanist lore, items, resonance. and materials are scattered Say that three times fast. Ancient Arcanist Resonance. Ancient Arcanist Resonance. Ah, I'm ready. By now you've probably noticed that our squad but that looks like a rune, so we're going to unlock some runes. I wonder if we can get some sweet bonuses if we unlock all the runes. That would be nice. Yeah, yeah. Loot comes in many different rarities, give, give the adventurers some extra love. Very hard to come um, so the key thing he just one, said there was that legendary is very hard to come by. I really hope it is hard to come by. For what lies ahead. Right. You know, if it, <clears throat> if we do, if if you have to do this two or three times just to get the, the legendary item that you want, yeah. or more mm. than that, don't give it to me first time. Or you can. Depends how you good how you run the G-Wave, so. Yeah, it's, it's a hard one to know now this, this, at this stage in the game, isn't it? But I suspect. They've worked out some element of balancing, and again, knowing that there's no PvP, they can focus purely on what this PvE journey right, looks so like. Has a lot of um, to deal with here. Even we still, four javelins is still a lot. They've got a lot of skills and abilities they have to cater for. And then, we have the swamp tyrant herself. and then you've got all our four difficulty level as well. Oh, how sweet does that look? Old mate Colossus flying around with a flamer. The final boss here is with the Swarm Tyrant, the Queen of Spiders. Now, if Jen gets too close here, she'll take a lot of damage from the Swarm Tyrant's frontal attack, but if she tries to stay too far back, she'll get caught here we've got to get, speaking of classic game elements, take out the three weak spots. No. Looks like Scylla managed to never light on fire with And that, oh, that effect when it catches on fire. Damage. Very good. Oh, man, I think you're right, I just want to play this right now. And you can tell they use the controller too. You can. There is that. I wonder what the auto aim's like. I think it was off, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, the people said it was a bit can hope it's off, because otherwise I'll be like, uh, fix it. Hard to know again, you're talking. There's like four people that have been playing this game for a long time. So. Alright, so here. I mean, I love that. The hover. The, the Colossus. 
hovering with flame flying out. Just... By Something using special. teamwork and focusing on her weak points, our squad has caused the swarm tyrant to retreat. Right, so now's our chance for some more trash mobs to enter the fray with the queen retreating. After taking some damage. Not much damage, by the way. Look at it. It's only... Not even a quarter like damage. Maybe a help. fifth. Our squad has to take control uh, of this choke yeah. point to make sure they're not overrun. That is like true RPG boss level There we go. Damage. Nice job, Scylla. And there's that firewall. There's that beautiful flame wall that comes from one of the specials for awesome. um, and Jen, if you the do a Colossus. Combo here would be great. Maybe that multi <laughs> Alright, looks like our squad now has everything well in hand. Fantastic combo going on. With a firewall from one tuck, one Colossus. Rockets from the other. And then the Rangers missiles. And they talked a lot about how the uh, the the damage to the to the swarm to the swarm tyrant in this demo is is tweaked. So I think they've actually either made the boss potentially more difficult or um, adjusted the weapons in some way. It sounds like they're still working on that balancing, and this demo was a test. Okay, so here was a what? The, that's that's the ultimate. That's the Colossus ultimate. Yeah, which is immense. Mm. And of course, we've got this indicator here on screen, which uh, it depletes, of course, as time goes on, once you've started to use it. It looks like he'll get two shots out of this. Yeah, Maybe three. Oh, yeah, two shots. But this battle isn't over yet. And then we see the end. Thanks Thank you for, for watching coming. our live gameplay Cheers, Ben. Today. Anthem will be available on February 22nd <laughs> for PC, Xbox um, One, and cheers, PlayStation dude. 4. So for more information, this is the bit that they, remember the, the, like Arix last week when we spoke mentioned that, oh man, he got he got right up to, the, to defeat the boss. He was getting through it and then all of a sudden it stopped. Um, I suspect that was his pain right there. <laughs> and now we're currently looking at a cat. So if you're still with us, um, <laughs> it's, it's a enjoy this pain. vision. If it's a pirate cat, you, you've got to always have a bit of pirate cat to add a bit of quality. Piracy and anthem um, confirmed. Why is this in my playlist? Um, I'm just going to hit pause and, and say, look the other way. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, anyhow, look, that I think was the crux of what we saw from the trailer. We've confirmed a few mixed things. I mean, what? I mean, Brian, you said before you were just hankering to play this thing. Is there is there something that you're, you know, you, you've raised a couple of concerns today and, and a few questions and... Yeah, I yeah. think I think, I think having concerns is good, right? And mm. I, I don't mm. think you should ever walk into a game. Joy, it's all crap, really. Joy, you either buy the game or you don't, right? But for me, and one because I'm building a community around it, and I want to be able to provide constructive criticism back to the devs and devs, and you know, Bioware, and and to people who listen to you know the thousands of people who listen to the podcast, right? I want, you know, I want them to be a a critical voice but I can't help the fact that I want to play the crap out of this because looking <laughs> at the game it's just you know, it's everything that for me as a person I enjoy right there's there's, there's characterization there's mm. lore there's mm. there is a big map to go and play on however I'm in a javelin I can feel powerful I could feel weak I can go and shoot things I can discover things i can explore it's just all those different things so for me yes uh, i do have reservations and i do have questions which i think the gameplay actually created rather than answered mm. but there's nothing wrong with that uh um, yeah it's, I, I it just, doesn't, yeah, the, doesn't remove or devolve from the fact that i'm extremely excited that i want to play the game yeah yeah there, there's there's still questions um but, and the, there was one at one point that I think for me stuck with that trailer and it's a very specific thing. Um, but the, the storm flying across the game world just looks sweet. <laughs> it, it, you can it see why this, people are like storm boying, right? Or storm girl. There's, the, there's a love out there. You're right. But it has this, that, that ethereal glow and the aura and the, the, the shading and the lighting that flies off it and it just glides through the sky even when you're not playing storm you just look up and you go damn yep <laughs> that looks cool 
but um so look, there's a few a few cool things there and and of course we've talked about some of the things that uh, were brought up in the uh, in the twitch uh am am a a a a a a a a a a a with uh, with John and Mark, and uh, no doubt that was interesting. And if you're interested to, to check more about that, you can check out some of our, uh, I guess, follow-ups of that. Uh, we've got an article up about some of the takeaways, which is on anthemuniverse.com. Um, and, of course, in terms of other things like the Discord, um, we'll be talking about that shortly in terms of where you can join us and hit us um, because we've had some pretty good questions come through, um, and they were all at the Discord link, which I believe Mr. Binary Num is discord.anthemuniverse.com or yes, 0800 <laughs> and uh, people have been joining that uh, it's, it's it's still jumping um, every time a new trailer drops or there's a conversation yep. um, so our discord is over it's over, oh, it's over a thousand users right now so uh, and people are talking the law channel is probably our most busiest part right yeah, where people uh, are you know, coming up with stories, they're talking about assumptions, and they're creating backing stories for different parts of the game. Oh, it's a fantastic place to read. It really is. Indeed, indeed. And in there, of course, we had a, a few questions that we'll address quickly before we wrap up. Uh, Bull worker, of course, the Bull worker man has been in the bot in the in the member well in the community for well oh, since the beginning. Yeah, yeah, he's been around. Uh, fan of Star Wars, Mister Bull worker, check him out. But um, He's written here, can we update the cosmetics of the Strider or Fort Tarsus? Um, it sounds like no, although we don't know about Fort Tarsus per se. Um, but the Strider sounds like it's just going to be a base. With you, mate. Yeah, it's, it's a base where you can go yeah. and change and do stuff mm. to your javelins, but that's about it. Uh, Moxie X 85 now Moxie X raised a, a great question um, she said the future of potential romances do we care um, she says I feel like it has no place in the game right now but my opinion is getting flack so her opinion is that basically she doesn't care that there is no romances and that her community around her is questioning that um, hmm. so that's a key Bioware thing right if you go back and play you know, predominantly Mass Effect um, which is I guess most people within the last 10 years would probably have, you know, have an affinity towards where romances mm. are a big part of the narrative and gaming and your experience infrastructure. I don't think it matters here. Like, mm. go have relationships in the real world and experience them rather than virtual <laughs> to worry about your I think game. The summary is Moxie X. I think we agree with you. Um, I don't. I don't see there being no. a, a major fast around this. It's to me. I actually love the fact that they've come out and said, "Look, it's about the camaraderie." And I think the yeah. thing that, that John Warner said by comparing it to the Bastilla relationship in Star Wars Kotor um, actually made me more excited because yeah. it means the game is not about this sort of fake, you know, grapple and kiss and sex scene, which was always awkward as hell. Yeah, um, sex with more about the yeah, like I don't know about you guys, but if we're a bunch of freelancers getting out of the war, I I, I don't think we've got much time for the loving right now. Nope. <laughs> Hate to say it, but uh, anyway, I guess as uh, <laughs> as Jeff Goldblum would say, uh, life finds a way. <laughs> uh, question. Next question is from Guy the Stampede. He has three questions. You greedy, you greedy, greedy person. Bastard. But uh, no, good on you, sir. Guy the Stampede. What kind of cosmetics do you want to see? And um, what crossover of cosmetics would we like to see? Crossover. Okay, so that's a, that's an interesting one. I don't like crossovers. That's just me personally. No, people are really on this right now. They really are, yeah. Talking uh, about, like, the Titanfall thing is coming up a lot. Titanfall, uh, you've got Fortnite, uh, where it's crossover mm -hmm. different games. I suppose you've got Ghost Recon Wildland. All right, the one crossover which I loved was Ghost Recon Wildlands, where they brought in um, Sam Fisher. That yeah. right there, absolutely, hundred oh, yeah. percent. In but, division, the Sam Fisher outfit was the best. Yeah, yeah. The, the Splinter Cell. But you, you go put in Assassin's Creed in Final Fantasy fifteen, like mm. no, I, I, I don't need that. I don't play Final Fantasy to then see you know Altair running around in his robes, mm. killing beasts the size of planets. Like, mm -hmm. uh, but cosmetic wise. Uh, just as much customization as possible, really. Uh, you know, I think as long as they allow us to choose colors, they have a variety of different 
geometric shapes to javelin suits um, that allows us to customize the visual appearance as well as the, you know the color color appearance the physical appearance I should say um, I think is enough um, and they've already said right the customizations um, are part of the microtransaction market right so which is fine right if I can unlock micro I can unlock cosmetics through the game brilliant but if I can go spend and drop 20 quid on a bunch of credits go and buy a load of different cosmetics then do you know what? i'm quite happy with that I don't, I don't have any issues no i don't i'm quite happy to go do yeah that. exactly personal choice but yeah i i, I like i did like the that n7 freelancer um yeah i did yeah sweet. that was so good but but then if i thought about it later on how far am i, am I going to see my n7 pilot suit like i'm you know what i mean like uh, well, maybe a little bit around four times but you know, it's not even if I'm walking around Fort Tarsus, no, I'm, just, I'm going to be in first person. Yeah, but if your javelin was in your N7 colors, right? Yeah, it works. Yeah, okay. Yeah, fair cool. Um, yeah. You know, if you're the first person, you might want to be able to choose your shoes. I want some nice mm. Adidas mm. kicks or some Nike Airs. Interesting. Well, while we're recording, actually, I just noticed that uh, there's been some questions about Ted Reedy. Um, being the anthem composer now ted reedy of course is from dragon age and has a long relationship with bioware so i certainly would not be surprised if he was the confirmed composer but um there you go so that's possibly on the agenda i don't know if that's the truth right now but uh i wouldn't be surprised okay hot off the press right look at that, that that's that's live stuff right there. hot <laughs> off the press um but uh, anyhow next question uh how do you guys feel about the term bullet sponge so Guy the Stampede asks and, and discusses that Bullet Sponge is, is you know, to summarize you, uh, Guy, the Speed, Guy the Stampede, to summarize you, basically you're saying that the term Bullet Sponge is almost has a negative impact on games like this, yet we've been talking about it with MMOs and other games historically. So like Bullet Sponge has really only become a phrase excuse me, since Destiny and Division. Yes. Right? HP heavy um, or bosses in the MMO world have always been accepted to, you know, take a lot of damage. That's the whole point, right? You're elongating that, that experience. Um, so I know I don't, I don't personally think the term bullet sponge has a, a negative connotation. I just think it's actually the console market coming into what is now an, a MMO light world where they're, you know, two or three shots isn't going to kill the beast right you are going to have to literally hammer a boss for five minutes full of weapon full of bullets or powers or whatever to kill it and that's the realm that rpgs really work in right? agreed agreed um yeah i think you're right i, I mean i agree there's there's a, a, a for me it was very much not less less destiny for me more division when i really sort of got into that in more detail but the bully sponginess does come away as an unfair descriptor um and it gets pulled into this conversation because it's just it's the nearest thing we, I mean, people say stop comparing but it, you've got to because it's the only thing that you know uh, or at least the nearest thing that you know and it's not unreasonable for people to make those comparisons uh, but from all intents and purposes it almost sounds like the way they've described it I think Bullet Sponge will be less of an issue in this game. I think they're going to be trying to work out the balance with the PvP, sorry, the PvE side of this game. Um, and, and maybe that becomes a problem later on. Yeah. And so I think it's probably time to wrap this puppy up. Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, where can we find you? Where can we, where can we reach the collective known as Anthem Universe? Oh, Anthem Universe, you can reach at anthemuniverse.com or you can tweet at Anthem Universe. Or you could go to discord.anthemuniverse.com and jump in the Discord. Indeed. And, of course, of course, you can check out the podcast itself. If you're already listening, then, of course, you know where it is. Um, but iTunes and all the usual places. And the URL, of course, is anthemuniverse.com slash anthemcast. Correct. Um, and we've got, well, we've, got, we've got a special guest coming up in the next couple of weeks um, and certainly we working do. closely to source more guests, Binary. Yeah, we got a special guest that is probably more associated with Storm than Halle Berry. And <laughs> uh, we've also got a, hopefully a couple of other guests, um, which we will try and get on very hard. 
Mm. Very, very exciting. Um, and of course, we can reach you individually at binarynum.com. But no, Ooh. just binarynum. You can go to my .com if you want to, but it's just binarynum in Twitter or do. Or the Discord. Everyone's, everyone's racing to binarynum.com. That is now my homepage. Oh, look at that website. Oh, look at you. <laughs> you can, of course, reach me at OGAZ. That's at O H underscore G A Z. Um, as a collective, as we said, they're at Anthem Universe. Jump in on the Twitter, follow, like, do all those wonderful things, join our votes, join the Discord, have some fun, and we'll see you next, freelancers. Over the wall.